I wanted to show a video here on the usefulness of using data loggers occasionally on jobs. Probably twice a year I'll use data loggers. I have a dedicated bucket for all my loggers. I use the bucket system in my van here. And the most common is having one for supply and return temperatures. You can diagnose intermittent expansion valves, sticking, uh, you can diagnose electrical issues, shutting down, is it by telling if it's random or if it's periodic, capacity issues, that's what I'm going to show in this video, how to show off uh, the thermostats just changing temperature on its own, things that are hard to diagnose if you're there and you don't want to be there all day to wait for the problem so you can put the data loggers and then come back a week later and gather the data and see what you got. This brand is pretty good. This is Supco. I've used several different brands and then I went ahead and just bought all of them. Here's pressure. This was, I, I'll show on this video, I used pressure to diagnose a heat pump that was tripping. It took it about two weeks before it would trip on high pressure. These are useful for diagnosing, diagnosing hydronic issues for boilers, anything that has to heat water. You can have dual temperature measurement and record two temperatures at the same time. I went ahead and got uh, voltage. I haven't really needed to use it yet or haven't found anything with voltage. And then you can have current. If you're going to get a logger, temperatures are really all you need. So this was a system I put in, a Linux system. Kept the place cool for years and then just uh, maybe eight years into life, I added some extra vents to cool an extra room. And then now they were getting hot in the afternoon. Blue is humidity, red is temperature. Here's when I installed the logger from the van temperature. So you can see in the afternoon, it goes up 75 degrees. They actually hit 80 because that was a hotter day. And then this was cooler weather. And right here you can see in the afternoon, it gets hot so we can zoom in. Reaching our peak temperature right at about 5 p.m. Let's look at the supply here. Every cycle you can see the humidity going up and down. And you can also see the supply temperature. Uh, changing and then you can time your cycles notice the regular so you know nothing unusual here maybe a little more time on the cycles on these two but that's just the thermostat being happy let's look at one hot day and let's see what's happening so the unit stops cycling at about 10 in the morning and it just runs all day and it gets hot and then the weather starts peaking and then it cools down and it doesn't start cycling till night again so this is a capacity issue or a open window something that's just killing the capacity and when I looked closer uh, I found that uh, five five kilowatts of heat was staying on because of this sequencer having a short right here, the terminal shorted. I see that occasionally, so you're running the heat. Kind of a clue is how low the humidities are here. So the supply temperature is in the 50% humidity, and normally supplies are gonna be 80 to 100. Technically, supply air is usually always 100% uh, humidity. It's called saturated air. Put the data logger on there, came back, it's fairly obvious. This unit's staying on, we just got a capacity issue. It took me 10 minutes to figure that out with the data logger. Here's a trickier one. This was a Goodman system that I installed, and the unit would trip on high head pressure. It was a high-end system, so it would do three uh, retries and then it would do a lockout, where the customer would actually have to cycle the power to fix the lockout. What was happening is that this is looking at high side pressure. Look at these like random spikes. This is in winter time on heat pump running heat cycle and we're getting excessive pressure up here almost 600 psi and so let's zoom in and see a little closer what's happening. 
So here's your defrost cycle. You know, so we're running heating mode, like 340 PSI on R410A, hit the defrost, of course it drops down, and then it heats up. But look how long it's going, look how long that defrost is compared to the next cycle, which had a normal defrost. And notice the pressure didn't get that high. So unless you sit there and cycle this thing doing defrost, you're never gonna catch this. Basically just change the defrost thermostat and everything's good. Something I've learned doing air conditioning for 30 plus years is don't be afraid of callbacks. It's not like airplanes where you gotta worry about them crashing. Air conditioning will just shut down. So the data loggers make you do another trip out there, but the customer can understand. You just tell them it's an intermittent problem, which it is, and you come back and you get it fixed. And with the data loggers, it's like you never left the job. You were there watching it. Hope you like watching the video. Thanks for watching.